Yesterday, I went down to SideQuest Games for their fourth anniversary and to hunt for some retro video games. Found some really great stuff. They are located down in Milwaukee, Oregon, just south of Portland. Starting off on the Nintendo Entertainment System, there is Adventure Island for $18. Always excited to see Astinax, and I was glad to see Athena for $18. That is a lot cheaper than the Famicom versions that I was looking for. Usually it's the other way around. Donkey Kong 3, 25. Defender 2, that was by Iwata. Flash at Demon Head, 25. Make your own Scott Pilgrim joke. And Capcom's Chippendales Rescue Rangers for 18. I always love that game. Breakthrough. Blaster Master. And Batman, a Sunsoft classic for 16. I need to get a copy of that again. Capcom's Little Nemo the Dream Master for $15. You know, I always think that game is more rare than it actually is. Mappy Land, 16. Miss Pac Man by Namco, published by Tengen. Ninja Gaiden, $20. Such a great game. Both variants of Pac-Man and Pinball for $6, Nintendo Pinball. Rad Racer for $8, great Nint Nintendo game. Skate or Die and Skate of Di or Die 2. Always love the first one and I don't think I have the second one. Super Mario Brothers 3 for 25. Everyone needs to have a copy of that. Nintendo Volleyball 15. I was tempted to get that since I found out that my Famicom Disk System version doesn't work. Stinger. Super Contra 25, that's a great, great game. A Famicom Classic Mini for $99. And this pretty sweet Retro Bit Power Stick for 20 that I've always been curious about. They have a selection of sealed NES games. Donkey Kong Game & Watch for $120, don't see that too often. They have a selection of Nintendo Power back issues, an NES Power Pad for $50, Super Mario RPG for $110, Breath of Fire with a Box for $165, Super Castlevania 4 for $60, Final Fantasy 3 for $85, also known as Final Fantasy 6. Street Fighter Alpha 2 is for $70. Super Ghouls and Ghosts for $35. And Super Metroid for $80. Super Mario Kart for $40. A Super Game Boy for $35. Undercover Cops Collector's Edition for $130. A selection of various colored Nintendo consoles for $250. K Killer Instinct for $15. Super Street Fighter 2 for $25. Batman Returns for $25. Batman Forever for $10.
Darius Twin for $25. Great game. Joe and Mac Caveman Ninjas, $25. So many sports games. I have so little interest. Super Adventure Island, 25 Street Fighter 2 Turbo for 25 And Street Fighter 2 for 22 Moving on to the import Famicom games. Kaiketsu Nyanchamaru for $15. Attack Animal Gakuen for $30. Niketsu Soccer League for 10. Ninja Jajamaru Kun for 10. And Zippy Race with the LED light for $10. They have a modest selection of Mega Drive titles and a modest selection of Super Famicom games. Going through the Super Famicoms, there's Fatal Fury Special for $12. House of the Dead for $20 for Sega Saturn. And a selection of Japanese PS1 and PS2 games. Moving on to the expensive Takai case. There's 10-yard fight with a box for $250. Gunsmoke with a box for $90. Maniac Mansion for $145 with the box. Wampum with a box for $140. Snake's Revenge with the box for $250. And Super Mario Brothers with a box for 175. The OG Honey Bee Famicom adapter for 30 bucks. Gremlins 2 for 35. Adventures of Link for 30, Legend of Zelda for 40. Mega Man 6 for 65. Looking down in the lower case, stack up for $195. And a variant of punch out for $60 the white bullet variant they have so much more stuff they have Atari they have ColecoVision and they have a Takai case full of some of the bigger ticket Sega Genesis goodies they have Sega Dreamcast Sega Master System selection of Nintendo handhelds and a ton of consoles. I am here with Josh at SideQuest Games and it is their fourth anniversary. Yes, thank you for being here. Uh, time has flown. So how has it been being a retro video game store owner? How has um, well, it been? I've been doing this for 10 to maybe 12 years now. It's been a lot of fun. Started out of, out of my uh, uh, car lot, actually, went into the garage, and then opened up the store. It has been a wild ride, and it, we've been growing, and it seems like it's just not going to stop. So I love it. If you could go back and tell your, your yourself four years ago, what kind of advice would you do? Uh, just do it earlier. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Start earlier. Always, I, always. I was actually looking for a store a couple years before I opened, and um, didn't work out, but I, I enjoy it. I mean, a lot of store owners tend to get burned out over the years. Oh yeah. I still love it, so. How do you keep the, the selection up there? What do you do for the, the trading? I have a serious buying problem. Okay. <laughs> I like with a lot of collectors, like the hunt never ends. And, yeah. And so I'm all around the country buying stuff and 
just networking and talking to people. Um, and when you have a passion for it, it doesn't feel like work a lot of times. It's fun, it was just a side hobby. And then it turned into a bit of a collecting and selling, um, but it quickly just got so big that I couldn't, I couldn't really collect anymore. Um, and well, not as like a traditional collector. Would. Sure. Like, I enjoy the stuff in the store. Um, and there's a lot of things in here that I would prefer not to part with. Yeah. Um, but when, as far as like at home collection, I couldn't do both because I just needed the income for, for bills. So. What are what are your some of your favorite things to sell in here? Well, my passion starts with NES. So NES yeah. Super Nintendo. That's that was my childhood. Mm -hmm. um, so whenever someone walks in and, and goes to that section, I tend to gravitate towards them, and, and we chat and, and reminisce and uh, give recommendations. So there's this entire God. I'm going to sound really old when I say this, but generation of people that are discovering NES like that did not grow up with it, what would you recommend for people to discover for, for NES? Games? Yeah. Um, hmm, Vice Project Doom okay. is one that a lot of people don't gravitate towards. Um, I've always liked that. I mean, I'm pas passionate about like the Zelda's and Mario's, Punch-Out's, Contra's, all the classic mm -hmm. Bucky O'Hare. Um, but that's one that tends to not get played as much. Uh, for sports games, I, I've always enjoyed Bad News Baseball. Um, Tecmo Super Bowl, and um, I don't know. There's 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 a lot of fun co-op games as well. Oh yeah, couch co-op. That yeah. I think sort of that's a, a lost art. Yeah, it really is. Okay, so over here in the case, what would you recommend for someone who's getting into NES? Let's see. That we currently have. Obviously, like I mentioned earlier, I think Punch Out, Punch Out, Mario games. Um, Zelda Two is one of my favorites. Sometimes I get to overlook. Yeah. Um, obviously, Zelda, the first one is the classic, but I enjoyed the, the second one yesterday. Um, mm. Adventure of Lolo's are a great series. And RC Pro Ams are a lot of fun. Oh, RC Pro Am. Yeah, no, I, got, I got to tell you my girlfriend's favorite joke. RC Pro Am. That's a rare game. <laughs> yeah. I'll, arr, arr. I'll tell her about yeah. that. <laughs> On this trip, I picked up Athena for NES. It is much cheaper than the pink Famicom version that I was looking at, Skate or Die 2 for NES, and the Retrobit Power Stick for NES. Side Quest Games is a top retro video game store and they just celebrated their fourth anniversary. So if you're in Oregon or visiting Oregon, get yourself down to Milwaukee, Oregon and check it out. This is 8-Bit Joystick. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more retro video game goodness.